Hi, welcome to a new video on AC and DC machines. And today we're going to talk about the different parts of a DC generator. Generally, DC machines can be called as dynamo. Okay, dynamo are defined to be um, rotating machines. Okay, they are rotating machines wherein energy transformation takes place, and that's a DC machine. Ah, one of an example of that is a DC machine. So a dynamo, which is a rotating machine which converts energy, ha um, has two classifications. Okay, so yung dynamo natin, pwede siyang tawagin electrical generator or pwede siyang tawagin um, electrical motor. Okay, so yung energy transformation happens in between a mechanical energy and an electrical energy. So kung yung transformation mo galing siya sa mechanical, so from motion, i-convert or i-transform natin yung energy papuntang electrical, that's an electrical generator. Okay, ibig sabihin, gumagamit ng mechanical or a mechanism that moves so that it generates for us electrical energy and vice versa to that or the reverse um, the reverse process of that, which is from electrical, meron tayong kuryente, susuplayan natin yung machine natin, and then it will, it will create mechanical motion, or motion itself, then that's called an electrical motor, okay? Um, since these two are classified to be known as dynamo, they have the same set of parts, they have the same set of construction, okay? And that is what I will be showing you today. Okay, I have here the schematic diagram of a generator and there are different illustrations that you have in here. Okay, so you have this one, this one that is already enclosed, the one that we use in our laboratory, and this one which shows you um, with labels the actual parts that you have for, um, for the insides of your um, DC generator. This particular uh, video I have here or... Um, illustration that I have here. This is not a generator. This is not used as a generator, but this is a motor. This is a DC motor that I got from my aircon's blower. So, may motor yun. Nag-iikot ng fan. Ito yun. Okay. Um, I use this as an illustration instead of just drawings um, because uh, even though this is a motor, because as I have said, the construction of a generator and a motor are um, exactly just the same okay so again they are known to be dynamos okay in this particular dynamo in our presentation this is a generator while this one I'm holding here this is a DC motor so the parts of a DC generator okay, may be divided into two you have a stationary part okay and the other one is a rotating part Okay, the stationary part is known as your stator, okay, and the rotating part is known as your rotor. Okay. In, a, in a setup of a DC or a dynamo, obviously, the one that does not move will be your rotor, uh, your stator, and the one that moves will be your rotor. Okay, we are talking about rotation in this sense. Okay. So, here you can see, in this, in this presentation, Pinakita na niya dito sa atin that the stator and the rotor. Okay, so in our stator, you have there um, the field windings and the yoke. Okay, so let me show you. This is our stator. Okay, this is a yoke with field poles inside. Okay, along with this, although it's not attached to this, Kasama sa stator part natin is yung brushes natin. So, in this video, uh, ito yung brushes natin. Kasi ito may brush holder siya. Ito yung brush holder niya. Naaalis to eh. Which is stationary. Hindi siya, hindi siya umiikot. Ito kasi umiikot to eh. Wait lang, dumikit niya. Okay. Yan. Ito kasi umiikot ito. So, when this turns, okay, the brush holder doesn't move. Although there is a sliding mechanism in the brush holder, may nagsaslide dito, may umiibo. May umiibo dito. It's not part of the rotating part or the rotor. Kasi nga, si rotor defined as rotating part. So it's not part of the rotating, it's not part of the rotor. It's part of the stator. Hindi lang siya naka-attach dito. Okay. So, this one here, ito yung rotating part natin. This is known as your rotor. So, again, in your yoke, you have, uh, in your stator, you have your yoke. 
you have your yoke, you have your poles, okay, you have your um, brushes, okay. In the in the rotor, you have there your armature, your conductors, your commutator, your shaft, okay, your shaft. Okay, so to discuss each one of this. So I still have um, another illustration of the parts in here. Okay, we have. The first one, which is the yoke. Okay, so, itong example ko, this is a two-pole permanent magnet DC motor. Okay, two-pole kasi, ayun, meron kang isa dalawang poles dito. Okay, but, um, this one, this is our yoke. Okay, the yoke provides housing for our um, dynamo. Okay, so, it's, it provides mechanical support for the poles. Yan for the poles. Siya yung humahawak dun sa mga poles natin. And it acts as a protecting cover for the whole machine. Okay, so, the one that I have in here is a permanent magnet. And with the permanent magnet sticking to the yoke, ibig sabihin this yoke is ibig sabihin this yoke is made of ferromagnetic material. Okay, so, you have two choices for the materials for the yoke. It's either iron or steel. Okay, so, kapag um, titipid tayo, we use iron lamang. Okay, cast iron. Pag sinabi natin cast iron, ibig sabihin molded yun. Kung maga may machine ka, lalagyan mo lang ng iron yun. Yun, nakamolde na yung yung yoke natin. And then yun, papatuyin, paprocess lang natin siya. Okay, pero kapag mga malaking machines na yung gamit natin, normally we use steel. Kasi si steel is, para mas matibay siya. When it comes to mechanical strength, mas matibay si steel. Hindi ko na siya ma-adjust. Dumikit na siya dun sa kabila. Okay. So, yan. Or, okay, pwedeng cast yung steel natin. Ibig sabihin, nakamolded din siya. Pero, pwede rin naman, rolled steel siya. So, ibig sabihin, meron kang, meron kang, um, a plane of steel. Tapos, iro-roll yun natin yun. Kagana nangyari dito, oh, naka-roll siya. Iro-roll yun natin yun. Okay. And then, kapag na-roll yun mo yun, we're going to weld Okay. We're going to weld this here hanggang doon sa paa niya, sa paa ng sa paa niya. So hanggang dito in end housing nand. Okay. Okay, so steel is more expensive of course because ayun, um it's more durable compared to iron. Pero kung nagtitipid tayo, we use iron for the materials of the yoke. Okay. Along with it, parang kasama dito kasi kasama dito si yung terminal box, di ba? Or yung termination nung um, supply ng electricity natin, naka-house din yun dito. So, kung ito yung uh, ipapasok natin, kasi mahirapan akong ilabas to. Okay, masyadong malakas yung magnet. Okay, ito yung nakasampa dito sa yoke natin. Okay, so this is our yoke. Next part is the pole cores and the pole shoes. So, as you can see in this video, I have here um, pole magnets. In, my pole cores are permanent magnets. My pole cores or tawag din dito is field pole. It's made of permanent magnet. Okay, so permanent magnet to. Pero, in most cases, we use electromagnets for this. Okay, so yung electromagnets natin, we call that a set of field poles. Okay, ito yung itsura ng field poles natin nandito sa presentation natin. Okay, so you have a field pole here. Ito yung magsiserve na magnet natin and it will provide, this will provide yung um, useful flux natin. Okay, let me just adjust this here. Useful flux that we have. Okay, so may parts yun. Ah, so, ang purpose nung... Um, pole cores natin, or field poles natin, for example, they spread out the flux. They spread out the flux in the air gap. And also, being of larger cross-section, they reduce the reluctance of the magnetic path. Okay? What do you mean by reluctance? Okay, meron tayo na tawag na magnetic circuit. Let me just review a bit of that. So, meron tayo na tawag na magnetic circuit. 
just like an electric circuit, there are three basic components for your magnetic circuit. Okay, your magnetic circuit has MMF, which is known as your magnetomotive force. Ito yung force that urges um, the flux to be linked. Okay, through a certain magnetic path. Okay. Another one is it all it has flux, of course. We all we all know flux. Okay. And it has uh, reluctance, okay. which is the opposition opposition to flux linkage. So kung iko kung para mo yan sa electric circuit. An electric circuit has an EMF, okay, which is the electromotive force. Itong EMF na to, it, it pushes or it applies force on charges, di ba? Ito kasi yung um, MMF natin, it, um, it applies force on magnetic poles, while electromotive force applies force on electric charges. Okay, for, for current to move. Okay, for current to flow. Okay, ito naman, for fluxes to be linked. The very, um, the very notable distinction between magnetic circuit and electric circuit is this medium. Kasi si kuryente, kita mo yan, uh, it's not that kita, pero alam mo that it, it flows, it creates current, diba? it creates a certain direction. Pero si flux, kasi it goes in any direction, ang kailangan lang natin dito is, it, it does not actually flow, hindi siya nagpa-flow, hindi siya gumagapang. Pero it gets linked, kumbaga nahahawa yung mga materials around it, diba? once you're inside the magnetic field of a certain source of magnet, uh, magnetic flux, then you become linked if you're a ferromagnetic material. You you acquire um, a certain magnetic field from a permanent magnet if you are if you're a temporary magnet, diba? Okay. So, the opposition to the linkage of that flux, we call that reluctance. Pero dito, the, op the opposition to the flow of current, we call that resistance. Okay. Ngayon, Ngayon, pag binalikan mo yung formula ng flux natin, di ba meron tayong formula ng flux na pwede nating i-derive from flux density? Di ba you know that flux density is flux over area? Okay, which means, if I solve for flux here, that would be flux density more multiplied by cross-sectional area. So, sabi dito, if the cross-sectional area is malaki, if this is high, ibig sabihin, flux will be high also. Di ba? And, with the formula, with the formula of flux, okay, that's equivalent to magnetomotive force all over reluctance. Ang symbol natin for reluctance is S. Okay, the same way that current, diba, is equivalent to voltage divided by resistance. Okay, so as you can see, if I replace the formula of flux with flux density times area, this will lead me to flux density multiplied by area. And as you can see here, area and reluctance are inversely proportional. Okay, so if they are inversely proportional, ibig sabihin, um, pag malaki ang area, maliit ang flux. Pag maliit ang area, malaki ang flux. So kaya, kaya dito makikita mo that this field pulse, pag tinignan mo yung ibang illustrations nito, okay, makikita mo na, yan, malapad siya dito, no? There is, there is an increased area of the face of the pole. Para lang, mapaliit natin yung reluctance. Okay, yung magnetic path na ipa-follow natin. Okay, so, looking at the parts of a pole core, okay, or a field pole, your pole core has, uh, your field pole has this one. Ito yung core na tinatawag natin. This is your core. I do not have an example of this. Ano okay, you have a pole core here. This one, this part here. This is known as your pole shoe. Okay, you have bolted screws here. Ito yung um, iniskro natin. Yung uh, iniskro natin yung field poles natin dun sa ating yoke. So, naka, yan, naka ganyan yan. Naka, naka screw yan dyan. Okay. Ito naman yung field windings na tinatawag. Okay, kasi nga, this is an electromagnet. So, ibig sabihin, you have there um, a ferromagnetic material that we ferromagnetic material that we enclosed with enclosed with conducting wires 
Okay? So, if current is made to flow in this wire, ibig sabihin, it will create a magnetic field. Okay? Itong mga field windings na to, these are um, former wound. Okay? Pag sinabing former wound, ibig sabihin, bago to ilagay dito, iwinun, nakawound muna siya sa isang frame. Itong frame na to, exact size siya ng, ng pole core mo. Okay, so we know, naka-wound muna to dito din, saka siya tin-transfer papunta dito sa kabila. Okay, so yung there are two uh, types of constructions of the pole. Pwedeng yung pole mo is solid, kagaya nito, this is solid, buo to. Okay, tapos i-attach dito by, um, what do you call that? Naka-attach dito by screws ulit. Okay, naka-attach dito, itong, itong pole sumo naka-attach siya dito by screws, okay? Or, pwede namang laminated yung pole core mo along with the pole shoe. So, definitely, the pole shoes are always laminated. Okay, this is laminated. When we say laminated, um, it's made from uh, thin sheets of metal. So, maninipis na sheets of metal, like for example, sorry, so ganyan. Meron kang one sheet nyan, tas another sheet, tas another sheet pinapatong-patong natin and then it's it's um parang under hydraulic pressure uh, it's pressed okay and bolted together or screwed together okay so etong um etong field poles mo it's either made of uh, cast iron or cast steel okay and the and the laminations are normally mga 1 mm to 1 mm to 0.25 mm so an example of the laminations is if you Look at this, the armature, di ba parang ano siya, linya-linya siya. Yan. This is actually your lamination. So, mapapaghiwalay natin to. to okay, pero it will require some um, amount of force para mapaghiwalay pa natin yan. Kasi it's already pressed together. Okay. So, yun. Pero, pwede rin naman, sabi nga, pwede namang solid yung core mo. So, ibig sabihin, gagamit ka ng cast or molded on. Ano. Pwede kang solid pole core, pero, ibig sabihin, nakakast yan may mold ka na paglalagyan ng material mo para mabuo natin yung um, field poles natin. Okay? So, yun. Yun yung ating field poles. So, very important si field poles because again, it provides magnetic field to the air gap. Okay, so, um, for the field windings, yan, nakalagay dito, A field winding is the insulated current carrying coils on a field magnet that produce the magnetic field needed to excite a generator or a motor. So, if you're going to look at this, okay, makikita mo dito sa illustration nata that this is a four-pole dynamo. Okay, so, this four-pole dynamo will have the poles um, in alternating position, like, alimbawa, ito yung north, south, north, south. And as you can see, di ba, Uh, magre-repel to, so walang magnetic field na mabuproduce dito. At the same time, no magnetic field here. But instead, the magnetic field will be in this direction, kumbaga. Okay. Ganyan yung magiging magnetic field mo. North to south. North to south. And as you can see in the illustration, all the windings are series connected. So, kung naglabas tayo ng winding dito, pinaikot natin on one pole, continuing here, di ba? Tire-diretso yun, walang putol. So, this is, these are series connected. Okay, they are series connected. And current is made to flow in them. So, ibig sabihin, meron pa tayong, meron tayong DC supply. So, ito, this is supplied by DC para magkaroon ng current flow. Because if without current, hindi siya magiging electromagnet. And if it's not electro an electromagnet, then um, it will not create magnetic field. So, yun yung kailangan natin dito. Yung magnetic field natin. Okay. So, you have your magnetic field here. Okay. So, um, itong direction na to, so, ibig sabihin, if this is the north, papuntang south, papunta dito yung current natin. So, if current is going in this direction, in this direction, ibig sabihin, as, sorry, if magnetic field is going in this direction, di ba? 
A. Papunta dito, ibig sabihin, current will be in this manner. Okay. Kung ito yung north mo, nandito dito naman tayo. Kung ito yung north mo, so, ibig sabihin yung magnetic field niya palabas. Kasi papunta yan dito eh. So, magnetic field niya palabas, ibig sabihin, yung current mo, papunta naman dito sa side na to. ba? If you're going to follow the first right hand rule. Okay. And as you can see, yeah, isang path yun, yung pupuntahan na yun. Papunta yan dito. So, supply yan papunta dito. Okay? So, that's your field windings. Okay, so, the connection of the field windings to the armature um, defines to us the type of, uh, let's say, for example, DC generator or DC motor that we have. So, if the field winding, let's see, which is this one, is connected, shunted, when we say it's connected shunted, that means parallel. So, if your field windings, the windings in the yoke, okay, is connected in parallel to the armature windings, then we call that a shunt field winding. But if the field winding is connected in series to the armature windings, then we call that a series field winding. So, kung babalikan natin tong illustration na to, makikita natin dito na um, you have this wire here that connects to the output of the armature. So, ibig sabihin, it's connected to the armature windings. So, how this wire is connected to these wires, yan, it, um, dictates to us what kind of dynamo or what kind of DC generator or DC motor yung meron tayo. So, kung itong dalawang to are connected uh, parallel, then it's called shunt. Pero kung series connected sila, then it's called series wounded. Okay? Next, so this is, I, I have here an illustration of the field windings. Diba? Ito yun, no? Wounded, tapos meron kang pole dito. Actually, itong, um, balikan natin yung pole, field poles natin. Actually, ito, itong ilalim na to, yung call that pole face. Tapos, itong arco na to, you call that pole arc. Okay? So, the longer this pole arc is, the smaller the reluctance that we have. Ano nga po? Okay, so yan. Ito yung pole face na tinatawag natin. And then, dito nakapulupot sa ilalim niya yung ating field windings. Okay? So, this is done to lessen reluctance. And you reluctance, ibig sabihin, we are allowing the fluxes to be linked freely. And at the same time, ito din, even your yoke, okay, is made such that it, it lessens the reluctance in the mag in the air gap. Okay. In the air gap. Okay. Next is a compensating winding. Commutating pole. Okay. Yung commutating pole natin, parang mag-wound tayo dyan. So, yung naka-wound dyan, that's your commutating field winding or sometimes known as your uh, interpole. And then you have compensating windings which are collected located in the main pole shoes. Okay, dito nakakabit. Meron pang winding dito. Okay. So, what, what are compensating windings for? So, para daw ma-neutralize natin yung cross-magnetizing effect of the armature reaction, a compensating winding is used. Ano po ba yung cross-magnetizing uh, ano um, cross effect of the armature reaction? Um, kasi, since... Since the field poles, di ba ito? The field poles create the magnetic field in the air gap. So, ito meron siyang mag... Kasi 2 pole lang to eh. So, kung 2 pole lang to, ibig sabihin, there's a magnetic field here, okay, in between them. Ngayon, kapag pinasok mo yung armature mo, at nagsimula ka na mag-induce ng voltage, and when voltage is induced, magkakaroon ng kuryente dito sa mga conductors na to. And this is steel iron, or steel, so, pero magnetic material pa rin yan. Ibig sabihin, magkakreate itong armature ng sarili niyang magnetic field, magiging electromagnet din siya. So, imagine this magnetic field inside another magnetic field, okay, magkakaroon ng parang maaabala, kumbaga, madidistort yung initial magnetic field dito, which is simply vertical, halimbawa, kung ganyan yung position yan, simply vertical. Pag pinususyon mo to dun, magkakaroon ng magnetic field sa loob, so, ididistort niya yung itsura dito. So, that's the cross-magnetization that we have. So, para maiwasan yung cross-magnetization na yun, okay, kailangan ma-counter yung electromagnetic field na nakikreate ng armature mo. So, para ma-counter yun, we create 
compensating windings. So, itong mga compensating windings na yan, they are normally um, in series with the armature. Para naman, pag halimbawa, nagkaroon ng kuryente dito sa armature mo, nag-create siya ng magnetic field, sabay magkakaroon ng um, kuryente din dun sa compensating winding kasi nga series connected sila. So, sabay lang. Kapag ito'y nag-create ng magnetic field, sabay magkakreate din yung compensating winding mo ng magnetic field. Then, yun, silang dalawa ngayon yung mag-re-repel ng, isa, ng isa't isa. Or, should we say, magka-cancel out, ika-cancel out ng isa't isa yung magnetic field na ginagawa nila. Thus, yun, putting this back into position. Hindi na siya distorted because of that. Okay? So, the compensating windings consist of series of coils embedded in slots in the pole faces. So, may, magiging slotted pala yung pole faces natin. Tapos, doon naka-wound yung compensating windings natin. So, again, these coils are connected series to the armature. They contain few turns of low-resistance copper bar laid in slots in the faces of the main shunt field pole pieces and so connected that the windings, the windings carry current in the reverse direction to that immediately adjacent um, armature conductors. So, nakita nyo naman yung, um, nakita nyo naman ito, di ba? Sorry. Yung illustration natin dito kanina na yung kuryente nila, parang, um, <clears throat> although, although they are connected in series, pero yung pagkakaposisyon nila, dito, sa poles na to, for example, yung direction ng flow ng kuryente, ano, halos magka, kumbaga, in the front view, reverse yung itsura nila. Pero actually, they flow in the same direction. Kaya nga lang, pag yung pag yung, yung current sa compensating winding mo, tumapat dun sa armature conductor mo, syempre, magkakaroon niya, na, yung itsura niya in reverse operation, in reverse direction to your armature winding. So, mangyayari, they will just cancel each other's electromagnetic field. Okay, so yun yung purpose ng compensating winding natin. Kaya pag halimbawa, biglang may lumabas na compensating winding sa, uh, sa worded problems natin, dapat alam nyo na si compensating windings, lagi siyang naka-series, sa armature conductors natin. Okay. Next is yun. Si interpole or commutating pole naman. Si interpole or commutating pole, um, they are positioned in between the main field poles. Okay. So, kung meron tayong field poles dito, alam ba, ito yung main pole natin, itong dalawang to. Ipinosisyon itong dalawang to dito. Okay. To reduce armature reaction effect in the commutating zone. So, they eliminate the need to shift the brush assembly. Okay? If you watch the video, the previous video I provided, ang sabi doon, okay, dahil yung brushes natin, naka, yung brushes mo kasi nakalapat lang yun sa commutator. Yung brushes natin nakalapat sa commutator. So, ito yung brush mo, ito yung brush natin. Ayun yung carbon filler natin or yung mismong carbon brush natin. Ah, okay, yan. Wala siyang hindi siya wired. Ah, hindi siya nakakabit. Hindi siya naka-weld. Ito yung commutator mo. Nakapatong lang siya diyan. So actually dapat ito malalim pa no. Kapupuk pupuk na din iyan. Umadjust siya. So itong brush na to, it's actually positioned here. Kino cover niya tong position tong part na to ng commutator. Okay, so pag umikot to, pag umikot to, magkikreate yan ng friction dito. Okay. Kaya, kaya meron ditong spring eh. Kaya siya may sliding mechanism para if ever may bumpy, if ever bumpy yung road, di ba road? If ever bumpy, ang hirap mo ipakita nito. Yan, if ever bumpy, yan, iibo siya. So, yun, yung sliding mechanism also, also, um, reduces sparking. So, since iikot yan, may friction dito, may sparking yan. Also, Meron ka ditong potential difference, di ba? May voltage dito. So, most likely, magsaspark talaga yan. Okay, ngayon, para mabawasan yung sparking dito, pinoposition po ang brushes sa pagitan ng main poles. So, balikan natin yung isang schematic kanina. Kasi yun yung big um, diagram na, yan, ito. Okay. Di ba ito north and south pole? So, ito yung north and south pole mo. Notice this brush. This is a representation of a brush. It's positioned here. Which is, yan, equally distant between the two poles. And this one, we call this your magnetic neutral axis. Neutral axis or mag magnetic neutral plane. E, pinoposisyon ang brushes dyan. Kasi dito sa posisyon na to, 
ito, okay? Mahina yung magnetic field. So, in that sense, pag tumapat dyan yung, pag tumapat dyan yung commutators mo, hindi ba siya dumapektuhan yung induced voltage ng magnetic field natin? Okay. Kaya lang, syempre, iti-change niya yung, ano, iti-change niya yung, um, yung sa voltage induction, yung ripples, di ba? If you watch the video, nag-ripple yung voltage induced natin. So, iti-change ni brushes yun. Kasi na-displace yung position niya. Pero para hindi na natin aalsin to sa position niya, okay, para hindi na kailangang i-display si, si brushes natin, ayun, okay, naglalagay tayo ng interpoles or commutating pole natin. So, the interpoles are midway between the main poles. They are connected in series with the armature windings pa rin. Series pa rin sa armature winding. So, in a generator, the interpoles must be the same polarity as the main poles which they precede in the direction of rotation. Okay, so this is an actual picture of um, the field that contains interpole winding. So, ito yung main field poles mo, yung mga yellow. Tapos yung interpoles natin, yan, yun yung mga red. Medyo malaki din, di ba? Almost half of the size of the field windings yung interpole natin. Lalo na kung malalaki yung machines na meron tayo. Okay. Another, um, another inclusion dun sa ating DC machine is the diverter. So, sabi dito, it's very difficult for a designer to calculate the exact number of turns to be placed on the interpoles and it is sometimes necessary to connect an, adjust an adjustable diverter around the interpole windings to permit shunting of a part of the total armature current around those coils. So, a variable resistance connected in parallel to the series field. Si series field po kasi, you would know that a particular winding is connected in series because it has very low resistance. And that low resistance can be seen on a lesser number of turns ng coil. Okay, ngayon, kung low resistance ito, kasi nga manipis siya, at saka konting turns lamang siya, ibig sabihin, it's prone to, it's prone to burning. Pag masyadong malaki yung kuryente, yung magpo-flow, di ba? Kung yung armature mo, may na-induce na voltage sa kanya and then current is made to flow at yung kuryente to is very large current, okay? At meron kang series winding na ikinabit dyan sa armature mo kasi nga pinaprevent natin yung armature reaction gamit yung compensating winding. Pinaprevent natin yung um, sparking sa brushes dahil nga nung interpoles natin, they are all series. So, kung itong series windings na to are very small in resistance compared to the armature, ibig sabihin, hindi niya kakayanin yung kuryente yung dadaan dito which is induced in the armature. Ngayon, para ma-divert, kaya nga siya tinawag na diverter, para mahati yung kuryente yung papasok dito, yun, magsaka, magkakabit tayo ng parallel resistance. So, syempre, pag parallel, di ba, current, nahahati yan, di ba? Pag pumasok dito sa junction yung kuryente, mahahati yan sa dalawa. So, magkakaroon tayo ng lesser current that will flow here and the remaining current will flow through the diverter. So, as to prevent this from being shorted, kumbaga. Kasi sobrang laki ng kuryente yung dadaan sa kanya. So, yun yung purpose ng diverter natin. Ngayon, bilang designers, most of them um, place diverters which are variable resistors. So, adjustable resistance yung nilalagay nila dyan. Okay, para... Kasi hindi mo basta-basta ma-identify yung um, kuryente yung... Kumbaga, not exactly able. They will not, we, we are not exactly able to um, quantify the amount of current na pwedeng mag-flow. Lalo na kapag may changes dun sa rotation ng ating armature naman. Okay. So, following that is... Yan, the armature itself. So, the armature itself, which is this one. So, kung titingnan mo siya, ano ba yung best position para makita to? Ito yan, okay. Ito yung armature mo ito. Okay, so, ang itsura niyan, parang yung itsura ng screw nyo, diba? Pero, ito yung itsura niya. So, meron ka dito yung slots in the outer periphery. Ito yung periphery natin. So, ito yung slots na sinasabi. Ayan, may slots dyan. Okay, so, ibig sabihin, itong slots na to, this is where we house the armature conductors. Okay. And the armature also connected to the shaft. It rotates the conductors. Okay. Which produces flux cutting. And if flux cutting happens, then voltage will be induced. Okay. 
Also, the important function of the armature is that it provides very low reluctance to the flux through the armature from an end and south pole connection. Ano nga? So, this is usually um, cylindrical or drum shape. Diba? Yan know, cylind Cylinder naman siya. Hindi, hindi ko lang ito maalis. So, cylindrical siya. Okay. This is laminated. Circular sheet steel discs. Okay. Or lamination. Sa pinagsama-sama lang natin through hydraulic press. So, this is 0.5 millimeter thick usually. 0.5 mm yung kapal niya. Okay. And this is nakasusi, naka kumbaga. This is keyed to the shaft using this one. Ito yung key natin. Key slot natin. Para ma-fix natin siya dun sa ating armature. Ah, dun sa ating mechanical shaft. Okay. So, yung slots daw. Ito namang slots na to. If you're able to cut the uh, ano tawag dito? Circular sheet steel discs. Pwedeng yung slots na to. Pwede siyang nakakat. Kinakat natin. So, parang ni laser ka na pang cut dito. O kaya naman, pwede siyang punched. So, yung machine ka na nagpapunch lang dito ng butas. Okay. Ayan. So, this is your armature. So, you have actual pictures of armature here and armature core. And then, the next part is your commutator. So, your commutator is this one. This is your commutator, this one. Okay, and if you look closely, this commutator is also... Hindi na siya may focus ng color. Okay, this is also laminated. You know, iguit-guit siya dito, pero sobrang-sobrang nipis niya. Okay, so the function of the commutator is to facilitate collection of current from the armature conductors. So, when this turns, kapag umikot ito, maka magkakanta ng flux cutting. Pag nakat natin yung flux, you, uh, malilink siya dito. It will be linked here at the same time. Since nagkaroon ng changes sa flux, ibig sabihin, kakaroon ng voltage induced here. So, if voltage is induced here, then your, um, what do you call that? Um, negative charge particles or your electrons will be urged to move, thus current will flow. So, if current flows, baka kasi may mga path ito, may mga may mga sinusundang ikot yan. Okay. If it reaches the commutator, it, if if the current reaches here, through your commutator, this is we call, what we call a slug, a lugs, a lug. Okay. Pag pumasok dito, i-collect na siya ng commutator natin. So, si commutator collects current from the armature conductors, papasok dito yung kuryente natin, and at the same time, it will rectify. So, we say rectify from alternating, kasi lahat ng machines natin, although DC siya, it creates alternating current, diba, discussed from the previous videos. Okay. Ang gagawin nito, ni commutator, i-convert yan from AC papuntang DC. Okay. So, the si this is cylindrical in structure. And, yan, this is made of hard drawn copper. Okay, for very high conductivity. Kasi mahirap na kapag nabitawan mo pa yung kuryente na nandito. So, kailangan highly conductible to. Okay, the segments are insulated from each other by thin layers of mica. So, ito, may itim yan sa loob. May itim sa loob. And you can see that, those black markings in between the slots. Ito yun, o, oh, yan, o. Oh. Ang itim na to. That's mica. Okay. So, the number of segments here ng commutator mo, equal yun dun sa number of armature coils na meron tayo. Okay. So, each commutator segment is connected to the armature conductor by means of a copper lug. Ito yung copper lug na sinasabi ko kanina. So, nakasabit dyan yung wire natin. Okay. Para ma-prevent daw na maghiwalay itong dalawang ito kapag umiikot. Okay. So, yun. Yan yung commutator ba nyo natin. Hindi siya mag-focus. Yan yung commutator natin. So, you have actual photos of your commutator here. Okay, and then the next one would be your carbon brushes. So, the function of your carbon brush is to collect current from the commutator. So, kapag nag-flow yung current from armature conductor papunta commutator, and then, na-convert na niya, diba, through the use of split rings, or because of your mica, kasama yun sa tumutulong para mag-convert or mag-rectify ng current, ang sunod is, dito naman siya mag-flow, i-collect naman yun ng carbon brushes mo. So, ito yung carbon brush natin. Yung carbon brush natin na, yan, nagsaslide siya. 
<coughs> so, ganda yung kuha ko kanina. Ayan, ito yun ah. Ayan. Hindi ko na binasag kasi sayang eh. Ayan, nagsaslide siya. So, it collects yung current na magagaling dito. It will be transferred here all through a pigtail. Ito yung pigtail. Na itong pigtail na to, it's connected to this prong here. Wherein this prong is connected to the, yun, papuntang terminal box na yun eh. So, yung positive and negative, positive and negative terminals natin. Siyempre, hindi yan magkadikit, di ba? Pag kinabit mo dun sa yoke natin, kasi wala yan. Okay. So, yan. To change yan ang position, depende dun sa ikot ng commutator mo. Na ibu-ibu yan. Okay. So, you have the different parts of your carbon brushes here. Okay. And the box type. The box type container of these carbon brushes. Next, we have bearings. So, bearings are used to rotate shaft very easily. Usually, ball bearings are frequently used in heavy machines due to flexibility. So, ball bearings work very efficiently in heavy machines. The balls and rollers of ball bearings are packed in hard oil. Eh, syempre, kailangan smooth. Smooth yung ikot ng ating armature, di ba? So, andito lang yun sa loob. Ito yun. Ayan, ito. Meron din yun dito sa kabilang side. Okay. And, ayan, bumalik lang tayo dun sa, after the armature core, then we will discuss the armature windings. So, there are three types of windings for this, pero the most common are the lap and the wave windings. Okay? Pero, this windings will be discussed to us in the next video na, kasi, uh, with that, i-relate na natin siya dun sa ating armature winding diagrams. Okay? So, for now, we just know this as your armature windings. Okay? So, again, Obviously, alin ba, alin ba yung magiging uh, stator natin? So, yung stator mo would be the yoke, the field poles. So, kung electromagnet to, um, the pole core, the pole shoes, the field windings. Okay, these are all um, stator along with the interpole. Diba? Stator din yun. And then, along with the, what do you call that? Commutating winding. Kasi dun yun sa pole core nakakabit, di ba? So, yan, stator yan, along with the brushes. Uh, the brush holder. So, part yan ng stator. Ngayon, yung rotor mo would be anything that's connected to the shaft will be your rotor. Saan ko ba natahawak? So, anything that rotates. So, ibig sabihin, the mechanical shaft, okay, the commutator, the armature conductors, the armature core. These are all Ayan, the compositions of your rotor. Okay. Of course, the mechanical shaft is also one of the parts of the DC generator <coughs> or DC motor kasi ito yung nagti-carry ng mechanical energy papunta dito. Diba? Ito yung, ito yung parang handler ng or receiver ng mechanical or ng motion. So, this is a very important part. But also, it unifies all of this together. So, lahat ito nakakabit dito sa mechanical shaft na to eh. Okay, so there you have it. The construction of your dynamos. This time, before we go over the armature windings, let's learn how we compute the voltage being induced or being created by our DC generator. So this topic is entitled to be EMF equation of a DC generator. So, we have understood from principle of Faraday that whenever a conductor, so you have one conductor that cuts a magnetic flux, then voltage will be induced to it depending on how um, flux is changed or depending on how flux is being linked to the conductor. So, whenever there are changes in flux being cut or flux being linked, then voltage will be induced in the conductor. Thus, we already learned that for us to get the voltage in every conductor that cuts the flux, so that's your E sub C here in this equation, okay, that would be equivalent to the change in the flux being cut or the change in the flux being linked to the conductor with respect to a change in time. Okay, so simply, we can represent that, diba, ito naman, simple flux 2, this is simply just flux 2 minus flux 1, final flux linkage minus initial flux linkage. 
divided by T2 minus T1 or the span of time where the changes in flux linkage happen. Okay, so technically, we can just simplify this as just flux over time. Okay, where this flux over time is actually equivalent to lines or in units, it's, it's lines. So, naka-English tayo per unit of second, okay? So, if this is in lines per second, you have to know that we have a conversion factor that says one voltage of EMF can be produced by 1 times 10 to the 8 lines of flux being cut in every second. So, if we are converting this lines per second rate that we have for E sub C, which is your voltage in every piece of conductor, we simply multiply this by um, 1 times 10 to the 8 lines per second, okay, which is equivalent to 1 volt. Okay. In that sense, makakancel natin itong lines per second unit natin. And that will result to a formula of voltage per conductor, which is equivalent to flux over T okay, times what 10 to the negative 8, okay, which is in volts. So, you have to remember that we use this formula. Okay. This formula is being used when flux is in lines and time is in seconds. Okay. We use this formula if flux is in time, uh, flux is in lines and time is in seconds. So, here flux is lines. Pwede mo siyang gawin if flux is in Maxwell. Okay. And time is in seconds. Okay. And diba we know that 1 Weber is equivalent to uh, 1 times 10 to the 8 lines. Diba? We have a conversion factor that says uh, 1 Weber of flux is equivalent to 10 to the 8 lines, which is equivalent to 10 to the 8 Maxwell. So, if your flux naman is in Weber per second, it only says that parang yung mag-angayari dito is your 1 volt will be equivalent to simply 1 Weber per second. So, in short, okay, if your, if your E sub C is in, if your flux in voltage per conductor is already in Weber, then uh, hindi mo na kailangan ng times 10 to the negative 8. Kasi ito, this is already equivalent to 1 Weber per second. Okay, because of 10 to the 8 lines equivalent to 1 Weber. So, it will simply be flux over time. And that's already in volts. Okay, so, meron tayong times 10 to the negative 8 in the formula voltage. Kung ang flux mo naka-lines or naka-maxwell. Naka Pero kung yung flux mo naka-Weber na, tatanggalin mo yung times 10 to the negative 8. Kasi automatic, it's already in volts. Okay, so, I'll highlight this. And let me put the same set of notes para lang malinaw tayo that in here flux is in Weber and time is still in seconds okay. so what we were able to get is voltage per conductor and alam natin yung armature natin which is slotted diba? yung may slots siya tas dun sa slots na yun dun naka-ikot yung conductors natin at yung conductors natin um, each of them cuts magnetic flux. So, ibig sabihin, each of those conductors will be induced with voltage. But before that, we have to understand that these armature windings, they are divided into several parallel paths. Okay? And these parallel paths depend on the kind of um, armature winding connections that you have. Kapag po tayo ay lap wounded, so, let me write here, parallel paths. Or it's written here in our presentation. Nakalagay dito that, you know, parallel paths is the number of circuit traced by the current in the armature windings as it enters one brush and leaves the other brush. So, ibig sabihin, this is how your conductors are being connected to the brushes or your, or your terminals, di ba? Kasi di ba sin brushes nakakonect na yung papunta sa, sa terminal box natin. So, how this um, armature conductors are being connected to these brushes yun yung magdedetermine sa atin ng parallel paths na meron tayo. Ngayon, yung parallel paths na yun, nakadepende sa kung ano yung connection mo. So, kapag lap wounded tayo, okay, um, yung numbers of parallel paths natin is 
basically equivalent to um, the numbers of poles that you have, the numbers of field, po field poles. If I write here, parallel paths, okay, for lap, that would be a parallel path with the symbol of A would be equivalent to um, the numbers of poles. So, kung meron kang two pole, if your, if your DC generator is two pole, ibig sabihin, dalawa yung parallel path. Ang mangyayari doon is, yung conductors na meron ka, hatiin mo siya sa dalawang path. Okay, so, ang mangyayari doon, you will have um, windings that are connected in parallel, pero dalawang piraso sila. Tapos, ito na yung going to your brushes. You have two parallel paths here. Parang, ito yung armature windings mo, di ba nakalup yan? Yan. Tapos, nakakonect yan in parallel to another one. Kasi, dalawa, dalawa yan, kasi two pole ka. So, kung four pole yan, four pole DC generator ka, magiging apat na parallel connections yan. So, yung lahat ng conductors na meron ka, yung, il yung ilang ikot mo dun sa armature mo, hahatiin natin yan per parallel path na meron tayo. Okay, so ibig sabihin, ang makukuha natin dito is, since since these paths are connected in parallel, yan o, ba? They are connected in parallel. For us to be able to compute for the voltage that will be um, created or induced or generated by your machine, di ba dito tayo magkakabit ng voltmeter? So, ang measure ng voltmeter mo, since parallel itong dalawang to, okay, so your total conductors divided into two parallel paths, that's the, these paths are connected in parallel. So, if they are connected in parallel, ibig sabihin, their voltages are equal, di ba? V1 would be equivalent to V2. And V1 and V2 refers to the voltage in every parallel path. And that voltage in every parallel path will refer also to the total voltage that is induced or created or generated by your DC machine or by your DC generator. So, in short, ang gagawin natin dito is, kukumpute natin ano yung magiging voltage per path. And that, in a sense, will equate to the total voltage that we have in, for our generator. Okay? So, going back to the parallel paths, so kung lap wounded yan, yung parallel, number of parallel paths mo, equal na yan sa number of poles. Kung ilan ng poles, ganun karami ang iyong parallel path. But, it depends on degree or um, inplex or degree of multiplicity. So, yung degree of multiplicity natin, these refers to... Um, the numbers of turns, ba? Kasi pwede nga mangyari dun, um, between, bago mag-exit from one, from one slot, ba, sa commutator segment, bago siya pumasok at lumabas sa kabilang side ng commutator segment, pwede makailang ikot pa yung conductor natin eh. So, kumbaga, so, kumbaga, halimbawa, ito yung, kung ito yung inyong, um, commutator, pumasok dito, iikot yan dito sa armature mo, pero makakailang ikot pa siya. Okay? So, makakailang ikot pa siya bago lumabas dun sa other commutator segment. So, ang mangyayari dun, magkakaroon ka ng, uh, magkakaroon ka ng several parallel paths pa. Okay? So, dadami yung parallel paths natin. So, kung yung degree of multiplicity, yung pagkakaulit ng turns natin, is na doble siya, so, that would be duplex, Kung isa lang, that's simplex. Kung doble siya, that's duplex. So, kung tatlo yun, you call that triplex. So, it will be multiplied to the number of poles and that will decide the number of parallel paths for a lap wounded armature winding. Pero kung, so, ibig sabihin nito, P times M. So, parallel path is equal to P times M if it's lap. Pero kung if it's wave winding, the numbers of parallel paths will always be two. Um, irrel, uh, ang tawag ito? Disregarding the numbers of poles, so regardless of the numbers of poles, the numbers of parallel paths will always be two kung wave wounded yung ating armature winding. Okay, so, um, again, depending on the multiplicity, so kung gano'ng karaming ikot ng conductors mo bago sa pumasok ng isang segment papunta sa kabilang segment ng commutator, yon it will also affect the numbers of parallel paths. So, kung nakasimplex ka, talawa lang yung ating parallel paths per wave, pero kung nakaduplex ka, that would be 2 times 2, so 4 parallel paths yon And then, for triplex, that's would, that would be 2 times 3, so that would be 6. Pero kung frog leg naman, which is a, uh, we do not usually use this, pero for the sake of, um, 
possible questions and problems and it's so yung numbers of parallel path mo naman kung frag leg yung connections ng way ng winding mo ng armature winding mo that's equivalent to twice the numbers of poles that you have so you have pm 2m 2p for the numbers of parallel paths depending on the connections of the DC generator so kailangan um iintindihin niyo palagi kung ano ba yung parallel ano bang klase ng winding yung ginawa or naka-design doon sa DC generator natin. So, in short, we are solving this, okay, we are solving voltage in terms of voltage per path. Okay, this voltage per path would be equivalent to the EMF created by your total voltage created by your DC generator. Ngayon, if you already have EC or the voltage per conductor, kailangan nating malaman ilang conductors meron sa bawat path, di ba? So, in short, this will be multiplied to the numbers of conductors, okay, that are in every parallel path. Okay, so in short, if EC is equivalent to flux over T, okay, I have to multiply this by Z, where Z represents, yon the numbers of armature, the total number, total number of armature conductors that you have in the armature slots, okay, in the whole armature core, and divide that by the numbers of parallel path that we have. So, depende sa kung ano yung uh, connection natin ng armature winding, mag iba iba yung formula natin for the numbers of parallel path. So, this would be equivalent to flux over T, Z over A, ko na lang, okay? Flux Z all over T times A, and multiply this by 10 to the negative 8. If flux is in lines and time is in seconds, and this will be in volts already. So, that's equivalent to voltage per path. Okay, now, now, para makuha natin yung time, okay, kasi itong time na to, this is the amount of time it takes for flux to change, di ba? Pero flux changes happen whenever the mechanical shock is rotated in a full revolution. So, pwede natin kuhanin yung formula ng time natin using the formula of frequency, which is equivalent to 1 over T, Okay? And this frequency refers to speed, gano kabilis. And that's equivalent to N or RPM. Okay? Normally, it's RPM in, uh, it's normally RPM on DC machines or most of the machines are rated in RPM, yung speed ng rotation ng kanilang mechanical shaft. Kasi ito yung, ito yung rotation wherein one complete cycle of voltage induction is happening. So, para makuha natin yung T dito which refers to time. Okay? So, let's create um, solving for T, we have to cross-multiply this. So, ibig sabihin, gawin ko lang itong small letter T to refer to time. Para hindi kayo malito. That would be equivalent to the reciprocal of the RPM. Okay? So, kung, kung naka-seconds ka, halimbawa, naka-seconds ka, ibig sabihin, um, kung yung time mo dapat naka-seconds, ito, ito kasi naka-revolution per minute siya. Kailangan natin i-convert yan k to second. So, ibig sabihin, I have to multiply this by um, 1 minute okay, over 60 seconds. Kasi naka-ano naka, to eh, rev per minute. That would be 1 all over numbers of revolution per minute. So, I have to convert that minute papuntang seconds if I need time to be in seconds. Kasi yun yung definition ng voltage per conductor, naka-seconds siya. So, I have to multiply this by 1 minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So, that cancels this. So, in short, okay, ang mangyayari dyan ay, you have T equivalent to, magkaka-60 sa taas, over N. In that way, this is in seconds. Okay, so, if I'm going to replace the formula T by, um, what do you call that? By 60 over N, yung voltage per path natin, magiging ano na siya? Flux Z all over um, 60 over n times parallel path. Okay. I'll multiply this by times 10 to the negative 8, knowing that, okay, in this case, flux is in lines. Let me note that, para hindi kayo malito. This should be in lines. Okay. And this is in RPM. Nakakuha ba? This is an RPM. So, ang mangyayari dito, if we arrange the formula again, that would be E path equal to Re reciprocal, you'll get N in the numerator na. N flux Z all over 68 times 10 to the negative 8. 
Okay, so, itong flux na to, na, na, itong flux na kailangan natin dito, this is total flux, okay? This is total flux. So, if ever walang total flux na given, at ang ibinigay sa inyo ay flux sa bawat uh, pole, field pole, or sa bawat uh, permanent magnet that you have in the field, okay, normally will be given flux, flux sub P. Ang ibibigay sa inyo is flux per pole. Per pole. So, to get the total flux, okay, flux total, that will, be, that will be equivalent to the flux per pole given to you. Multiply mo lang by the number of poles that you have in the field. So, pwede natin palitan yung formula. So, if this is flux total, pwede natin gawin si ipat equivalent to uh, N uh, unahin natin yung flux. So, pwede natin itong gawin flux per pole times number of poles. And then, we have N times Z all over 60A. So, that's times 10 to the negative 8 and the unit will be in volts. So, remember here, in this formula, okay, in that formula, you have to remember that flux per pole is in lines or Maxwell. Okay, and your, and your N, which is speed of rotation, is in RPM. Okay, so kung halimbawa naman na naka RPS ka, eh hindi na natin kailangan mag-convert dito, di ba? Kung ito ay naka-revolution per second, there's no need to convert. So, ang mangyayari lang dyan, mawawala yung 60. Di ba? So, halimbawa, ang e-path mo, magiging ganito yung formula niya. E-path is equivalent to a flux per pole, P and Z all over A times 10 to the negative 8 volts, knowing that Flux, purple is still in lines, and this time N is in RPS, yung rotation mo naka-revolution per second, just in case. Pero pwede rin naman siyang, tapos tanggalin mo na lang yung 10 to the, gano'n na lang sabihin ko ha, tanggalin mo na lang yung times 10 to the negative 8, if ever, the flux is given in Weber. Okay? So, yun. This is our formula for the voltage um, produced or induced by, in the conductors of ABC generator. Okay, so let's try and do not forget the formulas of the parallel path. So, depending on the connection, mag-iiba-iba yung formula for parallel path. So, let's try the sample problems that we have here. Okay, so let's start with number one. Let me change my pen to, to black na lang. Okay, so let's start with sample problem 1.1 Okay. Make sure to write your given whenever you're solving for problems. Huh? So, let's start with letter A. Okay. Calculate the average voltage in a moving conductor if it cuts um, 3.5 times 10 to the 6 lines in 1 out of 50 seconds. So, isang conductor lang yung pinag-uusapan natin. In short, E sub C lang to. We're being asked for the voltage per conductor. And that formula is simply flux over time. Okay. And since the given is in lines, okay, I have to multiply this by 10 to the negative 8. So, here, the given is, you have a flux equivalent to 3.5 times 10 to the 6th lines, okay? And this rotates, or the conductor cuts fluxes in 1 out of 50 seconds, okay? So, to compute for the voltage, we simply directly substitute this given into the formula. So, you have 3.5 times 10 to the 6th lines, okay? Divide that by 1 over 50 seconds, for time. And then multiply this by 10 to the negative 8 for it to become volts. So, let me get my calculator for that to show you. Okay, naka-free trial. Okay, so we have 3.5 times 10 uh, to the 6. Okay. Divide that by 15 verse. Diba? 1 over 50. Okay, so multiply this by 10 to the negative 8. We get 7, 7 over 4 or 1.75. So, we'll be able to induce 1.75 of volts in that conductor if you have this huge amount of lines and this fast, if you move it this fast. Okay. Letter B is, yun pa rin naman, diba? Yun pa rin, nag-iba nag -iba lang yung speed. So, 1 out of 16 na siya per second. Therefore, you have flux, which is equivalent to 3.5 times 10 to the 6th lines. And time is now given as 1 out of 60. Okay, 1 rotation in 60 seconds. So, yun yun. 
seconds. Okay. 60 rotations in one in one second pala, sorry. So, 1 out of 60 seconds. To solve for the voltage per conductor, that would be flux over T times 10 to the negative 8. Okay? That would be in volts. So, that would be 3.5 times 10 to the negative, uh, times 10 to the 6 lines all over 1 out of 60 seconds times 10 to the negative 8. That would be in volts. So, yung induced voltage ko would be 3.5 times 10 to the 6, okay, divide that by 60 inverse or 1 out of 60, and then times 10 to the negative 8 for this, I'd be getting 2.1 volts for letter B. Okay, so simple lang. Madali lang naman. Almost direct sub lang naman. Minsan, nahihirapan lang tayo. Pagdating dun sa mga numbers of conductors, numbers of parallel paths, minsan nakakalito siya i-convert. Okay. Let's proceed to sample problem 1.2. So, for 1.2, calculate the generated voltage in a 6 pole. So, let me write that as P, which is the numbers of poles. We have 6. 1,200 RPM, that's N. 1,200 RPM. If there are 8 conductors in each slot of 126. So, you have Z per slot, conductor per slot yung binigay sa atin. You have 8 conductors per slot. For a total number of slots, which is equivalent to 126, okay, the flux density, so we're given B, flux density, which is equivalent to 60,000 Maxwell per squared meter is existing over each pole per face of 32 squared inches. So, yung area ng pole mo, yung pole face area mo, that's equivalent to 32 squared inches. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan pa natin magmano-mano mag-solve ng flux. Recalling that, okay, the formula for flux density is simply flux all over area. So, yan. Pag mumultiply lang pala natin para makuha natin yung flux natin. Assume the winding has 6 parallel paths. So, hindi binigay sa atin kung ano yung connection, pero ang binigay sa atin, diretso parallel path na, which is equivalent to 6. So, okay, reviewing the formula, E path, Simply equivalent to flux per pole. Kasi nakalagay dito, flux density existing over every pole. So, naka-flux per pole tayo, times number of poles, RPM over numbers of conductors, divided by 60, kasi naka-RPM, times numbers of parallel path. I'll multiply this by 10 to the negative 8, kasi naka-maxwell tayo dito sa flux density, and that would be in volts. Okay. So, for for the flux per pole first to solve for flux per pole that we that would be equivalent to the product of flux density and cross sectional area okay so for for total numbers of conductors naman that would be equivalent to um conductors per slot kasi yun yung given sa atin multiply this by the numbers of slots that we have so what i'm going to do is directly substitute them here in this formula pa pati conversion factors isasama ko na so, sabay-sabay na tayo doon. Okay, so let me write in smaller. Okay, let me just move this for a while. Okay, then let me write in smaller text. So, we have E path now will be equivalent to flux per pole is flux density multiplied by area times number of poles, diba? Flux per pole times number of poles times RPM times the total number of conductors would be the numbers of conductors per slot multiplied by the numbers of slots, okay, all divided by, so let me just get, yan, all divided by um, 60 times the numbers of parallel, that's all multiplied by 10 to the negative 8 for this to be in volts. So, substituting the values that we have, okay, my flux density is 60,000 Maxwell per squared meter. So, I'll write here 60, sorry. I will write here um, 60,000 Maxwell per squared meter. I will have to multiply this by the cross-sectional area, which is 32 squared inches, wherein I have to cancel squared meter here. So, kailangan makonvert ko tong squared inches na yan. So, let me... Wow. Ang haba. Let me multiply that by... Okay, so we have um, 1 inch equivalent to 2.54 cm 
if you want, pwedeng 25.4 na agad para nakameter tayo. Squared times, so squared cm tayo, 100 cm, a 41 meter. Quantity squared. So in that case, you have squared meter na makakansa to. So you'll be left with Maxwell na lang for total flux. And then we'll, we're going to multiply by the numbers of poles that we have. So we have 6 poles, a times, the RPM, which is, bakit ba ako naka, ano pa, naka times pa, Ay, may parenthesis na. So, times 6 poles, times um, 1,200 RPM, okay. Oh, hindi ka siya. Palitin natin to. Ang laki ng sulat ko. So, I have to multiply this by 6 poles, times uh, 1,200 RPM, and then I have to multiply this by the numbers of slots per pole. So, according to the problem, there are 8 slots per pole. So, ah, 8 conductors per slot pala. 8 conductor per slot. And then multiply this by 1, 2, 6 slots. Okay. Yan. Hindi na kasya. All divided by... Oops. All divided by 60 times the number of parallel paths, which is 6. Okay, and then all of this multiplied to, so times 10 to the 8. Nilagay ko sa ilalim ha, kaya nag-positive to. Hindi kasi kasha dito sa right side eh. Okay, so, to get E path, that would be equivalent to, let's get our calculator. So, you have there, um, 60,000 times 32 times 2.54 squared. Okay, divided by 100 squared times 6 poles, times 1,200 RPM, times 8 conductors per slot, times 126 slots. All of this will be divided by 60, yung conversion natin ng RPM, times the numbers of parallel paths na anin. Okay, and then I'll multiply my answer by 10 to the negative 8. Okay, and that produces a voltage of 0 0.2497 volts. Okay, if you want, pwedeng ganyan, kagaya ng solution ko, diretsyo na. Pero kung ayaw nyo at naguguluhan kayo, pwede nyo isa-isahin yung pag-compute ng mga parameters. Ito, na isa-substitute natin dun sa voltage per path formula natin. Okay? Next, let's proceed to the next problem. Let's read first and write the given. So, we have problem 1.3. So, a 6 pole, we have P equal to 6. DC generator has an armature winding with 504 conductors. So, total conductors yun, 504, connected in six, in 6 parallel paths. Okay. Calculate the generated voltage in a machine if each pole produces yun. So, meron tayong flux per pole. Each pole daw has 0.0265 Weber. So, note, naka Weber tayo. So, tatanggalin natin yung 10 to the negative 8 natin. And then, the armature speed is 25 RPS. We have N equal to 25. Naka RPS tayo. Naka per second tayo. So, yung denominator mo na 60, aalsin natin din yun. Therefore, your E path now formula will be flux per pole times number of poles times speed times the total number of conductors. Okay? Divided by A na lang. Wala na yung 60 kasi naka RPS tayo. Tapos, wala na rin times 10 to the negative 8. Naka volts na tayo. Okay? Substituting all the given, you have... 0 0.0265 Weber okay, times you have 6 poles times 25 RPS okay, multiplied by the numbers of conductors na 504 all divided by the numbers of what? The numbers of parallel pa that we have which is 6. So technically cancel lang din. And the answer will already be in volts. So your voltage per path or the voltage of your DC machine will be equivalent to oh Sorry. Let me get that. Okay. So that would be 0 0.0265 times uh, 25 times 504. Okay. And then we'll have yeah, 333.9 volts. Okay. Let's proceed to the last example, which is uh, 1.4. So, for 1.4, we are being asked to uh, calculate the voltage generated by a 4-pole, so P equal to 4, DC machine given the following data. So, you have armature slots, 
Okay na, 55. Then you have conductor zipper slot, which is 4. You have a total flux, so flux, flux sub T na to, which is equivalent to 1.86 times 10 to the 7th lines. Total flux to ha. Speed. So you have N equivalent to 1,800 RPM. And you are being, being given a duplex lap. So, kapag duplex lap, kailangan natin ang formula for parallel path. At kapag lap yan, that's equivalent to the numbers of poles times the, the degree of multiplicity. So, in this case, since duplex yan, therefore, M will be equivalent to 2. So, the numbers of parallel paths here will be equivalent to the numbers of poles, which is 4, okay, times duplex, which is 2. So, yung parallel paths natin ay 8. You have 8 paths. In that case, pwede na tayo mag-solve ng voltage per path. Okay, so yung e-path ngayon natin would be equivalent to um, flux, total flux na. Flux total. Hindi na kailangan ng numbers of poles kasi nakatotal na yung flux. NZ. Okay, all over. 60A. Kasi naka-RPM tayo. Tapos, naka times 10 to the negative 8 tayo kasi naka-lines yung flux natin. And that would be volts. So, solving for that, your total flux is 1.86 times 10 to the 7 lines. Okay. Multiply that to 1,800 RPM. Multiply that to total number of conductors. So, you have 4 conductors per slot. And the armature has a total of 55 slots. Okay. Cancel ito. All of this divided by 60, kasi naka-RPM tayo, times the parallel path we're able to solve. So, that's 8. Okay? I have to multiply my answer by 10 to the negative 8. So, lagyan ko na lang sa denominator ng 10 raised to 8. So, my E path for this problem will definitely be... Let's get our calculator. So, that would be... Okay. 1.86 times 10 raised to 7. Okay. Multiply this by 1,800 times 4 conductors in all 55 slots. Okay? Divide that by um, 60 times 8. And by answer, to be multiplied by 10 to the negative 8. So, I will get 153.45 voltage reading on every path. Okay, so 153.45 volts. So I, I hope you learned how to do the form, how to use the formula. So the next video will be about armature windings. Uh, in the next video, you'll be able to see what the winding looks like in the commutator slots or segments. Okay, kasi dito hindi ko pa pinakita yah. Although pinakita ko na that these um that these conductors are divided into parallel paths depending on the kind of windings we are doing for them. Okay, so and I hope you learned. Uh, the different parts of the generator and um, the voltage equations of a DC generator.